Girls rule, boys drool. She said her name was Ellie. Ellie Garcia, she said, and then gave them a look Michael couldn't read, as if she knew something they didn't, or was just trying to act mysterious, which is something girls did all the time. Manny said they couldn't help it. It was in their DNA. After Manny handled the introductions for them, Michael said, You didn't try to escape today. I didn't run away the other day. I was just late to be somewhere. Up close, she was the most beautiful girl Michael had ever seen. This, he knew, was an observation coming from a boy who had no real interest in girls, other than his usual observation about them, which was how different they were from guys. That will change sooner than you think, Carlos always said when they'd have a conversation about girls. I have no time for them, Michael would say back, and Carlos would laugh and say, Oh, you'll make time. Michael wasn't so sure about that. All he knew with this girl right in front of him, not a hundred yards away now, was this. Ellie Garcia was different than all the other girls. He pictured her being the best player on her girl's team by a mile. How old are you? He said in a voice as loud as a door slamming. Ellie jumped, as if Michael had yelled directly into her ear. Manny put a hand on Michael's shoulder. Someday, he said, my friend's dream is to host his own interview show on television. I would say like Total Request Live, except he doesn't watch MTV. No baseball highlights. Very funny, Michael said. He felt himself coloring the way he knew he did when he was embarrassed. Manny liked to say it turned his coloring from baseball glove to New York Mets orange. Ellie smiled. I turned 12 last month. Her accent, Michael noticed, was slightly heavier than his own. But pretty somehow, the way she was. Where are you from? Michael said. The interview continues, Manny said. The Bronx, Ellie said. At the same moment, both Michael and Manny said, Which part? All three of them laughed. Ellie pointed to her left at the cars going north on the Deegan. Up there, she said. But how come you two get to ask all the questions? We don't, Manny said. Your turn, and don't worry. I'm like Radio Shack. If you've got questions, I've got answers. Ellie said, I have no idea what you're talking about. Join the club, Michael said. Okay, Ellie said. I'll keep it simple. Who are you guys? Manny then tried to tell her both his and Michael's life stories in the space of about five minutes. What his father did, where he lived, where they went to school, how Michael and Carlos and Papi had come over on the boat, everything except what had happened to Papi. When he finally stopped, just to take a breath, Ellie said to Michael, You're Cuban? Really? Cuban-American now, he said. That's what I'm taught to say. He tilted his head at her. Where are you from? Mystery look again. Same small smile. Oh, I'm from the Caribbean too, she said. Ellie Garcia, Manny said. From somewhere in the Bronx and somewhere in the Caribbean before that. The girl who shows up out of nowhere to throw like a boy. And you, Mr. Manny Cabrera, talk more than one of my girlfriends, she said. Michael laughed too loudly at that one. Manny gave him his shut-up look. Michael asked Ellie if she could hang around for a while. Does that mean you're asking me to play? She said. He said, yeah, he guessed he was. Then Michael said, I can't tell who's the cat here and who's the little mouse. You're the cat, Ellie said, like one my father used to sing to me about when I was little, Missy Foos the cat. Michael couldn't believe his ears. My father used to sing to me the same song, he said. Missy Fus dormido en su cama está. Missy Fus the cat is sleeping on the bed, she said. Michael said, I thought it was just a Cuban song. My father told me it was our song, she said. They both knew about Missy Fus. Cool, he thought. She reached into his glove, took the ball out, smiled at him one last time, again looking to Michael like there was some joke she wouldn't let him in on. I'll pitch, she said. 
and Michael said he'd catch for a change. A left-handed catcher? Ellie said. As much as it physically pains me to admit this, he's not just the best pitcher on our team, he's the best catcher too, Manny said. And the best center fielder, and... Enough, Michael said. Ellie said to Manny, But I thought you were the catcher. Only because he's the best pitcher and the best center fielder, Manny said. Please shut up and hit, Michael said. They agreed that everybody would get ten hits. Then they go pick up whatever balls there were scattered around the field before it would be somebody else's turn at bat. The problem for Manny was getting his bat on the ball ten times. He hit a few of Ellie's pitches at the start when she wasn't throwing her hardest. But when she turned up the heat, the way Michael did when he got loose, Manny started to miss. Badly. Finally, he dribbled one to where the second baseman would have been, which made nine hits for him. Okay, Michael said to his friend. Two outs, bottom of the ninth, runners on second and third, our team down by a run. Base hit sends us to Williamsport. There's an open base, Manny said. If she knows what's good for her, she'll walk me. Base is loaded then, smart guy. No place to put you. Does that mean I can pitch from a full wind-up? Ellie said. Manny whistled through his teeth the way he did when he was impressed by something. She's good, he said. Michael said, an ice cream says you don't put the ball in play. Make it both our dinners at McDonald's. We were going there anyway. You okay with that? I'm good, Michael said. Carlos gave me money. It's on then. Manny fixed his helmet, dug in the way he did with his back foot, the one closest to Michael, wiggled his bat back and forth. Ellie threw one past him, down the middle, a blazer for strike one. As Michael threw the ball back, Manny said, Good hit a swing and miss sometimes on a pitch they like, so the pitcher will throw it again. I never heard that one, Michael said. Ellie threw strike two past him, same place, maybe a little closer to the outside corner. That pitch you wanted her to throw again? Michael said, trying not to grin. I think she just threw it. Manny kept his eyes on the girl. Shut up, he said to Michael. But, Michael said, ignoring him. If I'm following your thinking here, you've got her right where you want her. Manny wiggled his bat harder, the way Gary Sheffield did, his face suddenly serious, as if this were a real game, real bottom of the ninth, a field full of players. Instead of just the three of them on an afternoon, Michael suddenly wanted to last forever. Now Michael watched, as Ellie went into the same high-kick wind-up Michael used. Was she trying to copy him? And threw a total screamer, a smoke alarm, past Manny Cabrera for strike three. When the ball was in Michael's glove, he looked out at her. She hadn't even changed expression. Or maybe she was just trying to keep a straight face. She didn't say anything, and neither did he. And neither did Manny. Michael hadn't even moved his glove yet. Of course, Manny spoke first. He dropped his bat, turned to Michael, and in a little boy voice said, I could use a hug. They all laughed again. Ellie had a good laugh. She wasn't shy when she laughed or embarrassed, just happy. When they stopped, Ellie said to Michael, I haven't had a chance to hit against you yet. I've already thrown enough today, he said. And besides, we've got a game tomorrow. Ellie put a hand on her hip, tilted her head a little, gave him a suspicious look. Afraid a girl might get a hit off you, she said. No, he said. I'm never afraid somebody might get a hit. Is that bragging? No, 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 Michael said, blushing again, he knew. I just mean that putting your best up against somebody else's, that's not something that should make you afraid. That's the fun of it all. He wanted to explain to this girl he'd just met that there were plenty of things that made him afraid, just not baseball. Baseball always made him happy. Never happier than today, he thought. And if I did pitch to you and let you get a hit, you'd know it, Michael said. How do you know that? Ellie said. Because you're just like me, Michael said. 
They were sitting in the grass, a few yards from home plate. Manny had gone to get his cell phone out of his bat bag, saying he had to call his mom. Ellie said she had to go soon. Michael asked, where? Ellie answered, no more questions for today. As she said it, Michael saw that her eyes were focused on the area behind home plate, on the other side of the screen. Who's who with Manny? Who's who with Manny? Michael said. The policeman and the other man, she said.